Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Today, I'm going to install a 220 volt outlet in the garage so that I can finally use my air compressor. So, this is a re-upload of a previous video. A lot of viewers told me in the comments that I should have explained the wiring in better detail. I appreciate all of your feedback, so here you go. The ideal time to install an outlet is during new construction, but because this house has a basement, I'll be able to run wire and install the 220 volt outlet without having to go inside of any walls. If you don't have a basement where you can access the breaker box and run wire to the garage, then it's not going to be as simple as what I'm about to do. Also, don't attempt to do this yourself unless you know exactly what you're doing when it comes to electrical work or have an electrician help you. First thing I'm doing is deciding where I want to put the outlet and compressor. I chose this spot because it's near the center of the garage so the hose can reach any vehicle I'm working on. And it's more than three feet from this water spigot. Using a measuring tape, I figured how far my outlet would be from this corner. And uh, I'll take this measurement here to the basement. Down in the basement, I measured from the corner across the top of the foundation and pulled back this insulation between the floor joists where my outlet would be. I'm drilling from the basement side to the garage side so I can see where these 2x10 joists are. If I drill from the garage side, there's a chance I could drill my hole at one of the joists and then have to drill another hole for the outlet a couple inches over. Using a half inch wood bit, I drilled through the footer and drywall. Now I need to measure the distance from the hole to the breaker box to figure out how much wire I'll need. And it ended up being about 35 feet of 210 wire. It comes in 25 and 50 foot rolls. So if you can keep the length under 25 feet, you'll save some money. I snagged the pick of the prongs on my compressor plug because there's a lot of different shapes and I want to be sure I buy the right one. All right, just got back from the hardware store and here's what I bought. I picked up a dual pole breaker in 30 amps, 50 feet of 10-2 wire, and this has two shielded wires plus the bare copper wire. And that wire isn't cheap. Uh, it was uh, 65 bucks. And the 220 volt outlet, and uh, that's the same as the prongs on the quarter of my compressor. And uh, this actually mounts flush on the wall, just like that. The first thing I'm doing is running the wire, starting in the garage and uh, feeding it through the half inch hole into the basement. And I'm stuck on something. Just, uh, just stuck on the footer here. That should do it. Uh, I'll just pull the rest in from down here. <laughs> now I'm hung up on the garage side. All right, just a little kink in the wire here. And uh, while I'm up here, I'm just gonna push the rest of the wire through. And it's, uh, it's pretty important to allow for some extra wire when measuring. Better to have too much than not enough. Notice the very end is already kinked, so when I'm uh, back in the basement, pull on the wire, I won't be able to tug the wire all the way through. Okay, back in the basement. I'm going to run the wire over to the panel. Okay, wire is all done. I used uh, wire staples every few feet to hold it in place and was actually able to fit the wire through existing holes in the joists. So I didn't even need to get out my drill. This is a 200 amp panel. So I had plenty of space for the uh, new dual pole breaker. I'm not an electrician, so I have one help me do this part. I'll tell you how he explained it to me in simple terms. First, I'm in the habit of calling it 220 volt, but nowadays it's actually 240 volt. Just like 40 years ago it was 110 volt, but nowadays it's 120 volt, just because modern appliances use more power. But people still call them by both names. So. On a regular three prong, 120 volt outlet, you have the hot wire, which is black, neutral, which is white, and ground, which is bare. On this three prong, 240 volt outlet, we're gonna have a ground 
and two hot wires instead of one hot and one neutral. 120 plus 120 equals 240. That made sense why the double breaker was needed since on a 120 volt outlet, the hot wire uses a single breaker. Now this is a three wire 240 volt outlet. My compressor has a three prong plug. There are also four wire 240 volt outlets which have a neutral fourth wire for 240 volt appliances with a four prong plug. This video won't help you if you have a four prong plug. Then he talked about hertz and phases and I just felt dumb. So looking at this 200 amp panel here, the top is pretty crowded. We used a side knockout to run the wire into the box. And you can see we used a grommet to secure the wire. So let's follow this wire inside. You can see the bare ground wire right there, which gets grounded. Now I'm following the black and white wires, which are both hot, down to the double breaker. I'm passing all these 120 volt breakers here for things like lights and outlets inside the house. And here is the new double breaker for the 240 volt outlet. The white wire normally used for neutral and black hot wire are each going to one of the poles on the double breaker for a total of 240 volts. We put some black electrical tape on the white wire to signify that we're using it as a hot wire instead of a neutral just in case someone else buys this house one day and they're wondering what's going on in here. Back in the garage, I attached the inside of the outlet to the wall with screws. The wire ran through this clamp, which I've tightened down. And then I stripped the ends and attached them into the receptacle. The black hot and the ground is done. Now remember, both of these are hot now and it's good practice to put black electrical tape on the white wire since I'm using it as a hot wire now. So the stripped end of the wire just goes in here. And then tighten the clamping screw down and make sure it's secure. I double checked all three and now I'm going to put the cover on. One thing that bugs me, this plug has a single ground prong on top and two hots on the bottom. Well, the outlet has the ground on the bottom. So I'll have to have the plug in upside down. It looks goofy, but it doesn't bug me enough to turn the outlet the other way right now. So there we go. Now let's flip the breaker on and try it out. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more updates and projects here at the 6th Gear Garage.